I'm about to unmask the fraud in podcasting and tell you the truth about podcast rankings. Some will hate this episode. I've been in the podcasting industry for around about 22 years now, and I've lost count of the number of times I've heard people wanging on about podcast rankings. I'm about to tell you how little they matter when it comes to your podcast success. Okay, well, to start us off, let's go through what podcast rankings actually are. Well, by and large, they're seen as a way of measuring the success of a podcast. They're typically seen as ranking the most popular podcasts in a given category in order of their popularity. But they're not. Podcast rankings can be found on streaming services like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and they're determined by a variety of factors, including, in the case of Apple Podcasts, the number of followers a podcast has in a certain amount of time, and the length of time that a listener kept listening to episodes of that podcast once they'd followed. Reviews make zero difference to a podcast's ranking, and the rankings are generally used by the media to determine which podcasts are doing well and which ones are not, and potentially which ones they should bother writing articles about, which, of course, could lead to a bit of virality. So what factors influence podcast rankings then? Well, there are many, to be honest, but the most important one is the number of downloads and followers a podcaster has. A podcast with a large number of followers and downloads is much more likely to rank higher than one with a smaller number. However, we're not talking about general followers here. This is down to how many new followers occur over a very short period of time. If your new follower takes a week to come to you, then you're much less likely to rank than someone who's getting 10 new followers per day, regardless of how many followers they had before that event occurred. So, as you can understand then, if you have some sort of virality occur, whereby maybe you get mentioned in the press, or, I don't know, you do a massive burst marketing campaign where you get a huge number of followers in a short period of time, that will definitely help. Other factors which might affect your ranking are the frequency of your episodes. If you're posting one episode every month, you're probably much less likely to rank for any of the podcast categories. The truth is, podcast rankings are just not always a reliable indicator of success. They can be easily manipulated by buying downloads from unscrupulous click farm agents, which we covered extensively in the previous episode. I'll link to it in the show notes. There are also podcast consultants out there that claim to be top 1% podcasters themselves. They're mentioning that on their website so that they can sell you their expertise through courses and expensive one-to-one -one coaching sessions. I know what you're thinking, but that's fraud. And yes, it kind of is. So why don't they get in trouble? Well, they're technically not lying. They've taken the ranking from a website called Listen Notes, and this website uses a number of factors to calculate your ranking, none of which are actual listening numbers. They might be things like your social media follower numbers, or how many links are going to your main website on Google. The truth is, these professional services themselves are often using shady tactics to boost podcast rankings for clients because they've got to back up their top 1% podcaster claim. Unfortunately, that can result in your podcast being removed from the rankings. So let's talk about the benefits of becoming a top-ranking podcast, because let's face it, there are some. There are some real-world benefits to having a top-ranked podcast, despite the fraud going on and tainting the industry. However, you've got to do it the right way. And when I'm talking about rankings, I'm not talking about charts here. I'm talking about ranking in search. That's right. 
A high ranking on your podcast will increase your visibility and make it easier for new listeners to find your podcast. Also, having a high ranking can give you a sense of pride and accomplishment. And that's a rare thing for us podcasters, isn't it? It's a great feeling to know that your podcast is doing well and is being recognized for its efforts. A bit of a truth bomb for you right now. Unfortunately, having a high-ranking podcast does not guarantee your success. In fact, it's possible for a podcast to have a high ranking but still not be successful. High ranking doesn't guarantee high quality. And if what you're putting out there is garbage, it doesn't matter how closely matched to the listener's search terms your podcast is, if it's the audio equivalent of baby poop, then you're not going to have any success with it. So, while having a high ranking is a great start, it's important to focus on other aspects of your podcast, such as the quality of your content. That will help ensure your podcast is successful, even if it doesn't have a high ranking. Now, I mentioned at the start of this episode that this will probably trigger a few people. They will not like this episode. And one of those people, we mentioned them on the previous episode, is Stephen Bartlett. Now, I've come across some data which was actually quite surprising even for me. You would assume for the person that has a podcast that's regularly sitting atop the top of the Apple podcast chart that they would have a fairly sizable audience. Well, here's the truth. Not according to the actual data. I've seen the numbers of Diary of a CEO, and that podcast is drawing in an audience of 12,000 listeners every episode. Now, to you and me, that's still pretty incredible. However, when you consider how that podcast is marketed by not only Stephen Bartlett himself, but by Apple Podcasts, it's quite surprising. And when you scour lower down the Apple Podcast chart to some of the lower ranking podcasts, such as The Rest is History, and then you look at the number of actual listeners that podcast has, it really puts things in perspective. Let's do it. Want to ignore the vanity metrics and get real world results from your podcast? Book yourself one of my popular podcast audits. You can book one now at podmastery.co forward slash audit. That's podmastery.co forward slash audit. And when you scour lower down the Apple podcast chart to some of the lower ranking podcasts, such as The Rest is History, and then you look at the number of actual listeners that podcast has, it really puts things in perspective. Let's do it. Now, I'm going to open up my sheet of data. This is a sheet measuring 675 of the most popular podcasts in the world. I could tell you how I got hold of it, but then I'd have to kill you. And I don't think that's a great way of us establishing our podcaster listener relationship, is it? This is a list that is excluding everything that isn't a top 40% podcast or above. Now, as I've already mentioned, Diary of a CEO is attracting an audience of 12,000 listeners per episode. But what about The Rest is History, the other podcast that I mentioned to you? I'm going to type that in right now as I'm speaking to you. The Rest is History. There we are. Search. And here it is. The Rest is History, Goal Hanger Podcasts, and the latest episodes of that podcast are getting downloads each episode of 34,200 listeners per episode. And where is that sitting in the charts? Not even in the top 50. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, he's still got 12,000 listeners, Neil, so surely he deserves to be at the top of the chart somewhere. Let's take that into consideration and then look at ranking positions, shall we? So let's completely exclude everything outside of the top 250. And in fact, let's go to the 250th ranked podcast. That is globally a podcast from Fox Sports called Skip and Shannon 
Undisputed. That podcast, ranked number 250, is getting every episode 121,600 podcast listeners. Incredible. That is literally 10 times the size of the audience of Stephen Bartlett's Diary of a CEO, which Apple Podcasts constantly tells us is at least a top 10 UK podcast, often the number one podcast. Do you want to know what the audience of the actual number one ranked podcast, according to Apple Podcasts globally, is? It is, of course, The Daily from the New York Times, which has, no word of a lie, 16,986,600 engaged listeners every episode. Let that sink in. So if you're looking to boost your podcast rankings, there are a few options for you that can help. There's services that will typically use a combination of organic and pay tactics to boost your rankings, some legit, some less so. Some of the more popular services include Chartable, Podcast Ranker, Podcast Charts. It's important to note this, though. These services can be expensive and they may not always be effective. And... In some cases, they might use tactics that could get your podcast removed entirely from the directory. So it's important to do your research before using these services. Now, I may not surprise you when I say this, but I would advise against you using these services because at the end of the day, your ranking is not going to make a massive amount of difference in terms of how your podcast does if it's not turning up in the charts. The ranking you need to be worrying about is the podcast ranking in the search results. And the best way of achieving that? Content. Content, content, content. Highly optimized, highly engaging, and highly targeted content. Here's a quick tip for you for this week's edition of The Podmaster. Do you want to speed up your podcast production workflow? Yes. Duh! What's one of the biggest drains for us as podcast producers? It's the time it takes us to edit, right? Yes. One of my best secrets to slim down my editing time is using keyboard shortcuts. Most of the major audio and video editing software programs have shortcuts for commonly used commands and tools, such as copy and paste, fade, splice, All of those things that you're doing on a regular basis, you can assign one button that does them really quickly. And by quickly familiarizing yourself with the standard shortcuts, you can still significantly reduce the amount of time it takes to edit your podcast as well. The other secret source is templates. Templates really help streamline the production process. By creating templates for various stages of your process, such as mixing and mastering, You can quickly apply the same settings to multiple tracks, episodes, and series and speed up your entire production process. So in conclusion, podcast rankings can be a great indicator of success publicly in terms of your social proof, but they can also be easily manipulated, meaning anybody and everybody can have just as much success as you, regardless of whether it's organic or manipulated. It's important to understand the factors that influence podcast rankings and to be aware of the services that offer to artificially boost your podcast rankings, as well as the actual podcast professionals using artificially inflated podcast rankings to sell you their services where they will also artificially inflate your own podcast ranking. Additionally, having a high-ranking podcast doesn't guarantee your podcast's success. That's down to your content and your targeting. That's my advice. Focus on creating high-quality content and promoting your podcast in the right way. That's going to ensure that your podcast is successful regardless of its ranking. Until next time, good luck attaining Podmastery.
The Podmaster is a Podnose podcasting production. Find out more about us at podnose.co.uk. That's P-O-D-K-N-O-W-S dot co dot U-K. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Podmaster podcast. The fact that you've listened this far tells me you got something out of the episode. Want to get more free tips and insight on how to improve your podcast? Each email will contain insightful, valuable, actionable tips that you can apply to your podcast today to get closer to Podmastery. Sign up now at podmastery.co. That's podmastery.co.